Welcome to a new episode of the podcast. Box Agent is made by AI for business executives that work with AI. Today, we're diving deep into some, well, really quite disruptive research. It potentially upends a central idea in modern AI. You know, for years, the big story has been scale, right? Every major player chasing more parameters, billions, trillions, assuming bigger automatically means smarter. That's the prevailing narrative, definitely. Bigger equals better reasoning. Exactly. But our source material today, it's a comprehensive report on something called the Tiny Recursive Model, or TRM, mm -hmm. based on the paper, Less is More, Recursive Reasoning with Tiny Networks. It just throws a huge wrench in that idea. It really does. So the mission for this deep dive is to get our heads around this research. How can these, like, incredibly small, elegantly designed models actually outperform the giants on complex structured reasoning tasks. Mm -hmm. We're talking architectural cleverness versus sheer computational power. And the headline finding is uh, genuinely startling when you first see it. Lay it on us. Okay, so we're looking at this TRM, an, a network with potentially as few as 7 million parameters. 7 million. That's tiny. It's minuscule compared to the frontier models. Right. Think like 0.01% of the size of many large language models, the LLMs. Right. Yet this very small, very focused network shows superior, really reliable reasoning on high value logical problems. The kind of problems where those massive models, they just fail. Completely. Okay, hold on, fail completely. That's what the benchmarks show for certain tasks. It really s signals a potential strategic shift in you know, where real efficiency and intelligence might come from for specific problems. That 0% figure you mentioned, it yeah. just sounds, well, almost embarrassing for these huge costly LLMs on what seems like a core logic task. Yeah. We definitely need to break down these performance numbers. Let's start with this uh, this paradigm shift idea, moving away from scale is the only answer. Yeah, the standard scaling story is add parameters and eventually reasoning abilities just sort of emerge. Right, magic happens somewhere in the billions. TRM presents this really compelling counter narrative. It suggests that for certain types of problems, maybe many business relevant problems, the architecture, specifically this idea of deep recursion, is way more valuable than just raw size. So when you need that precise step-by-step -step logical deduction. Exactly. When every step has to be right, size can actually become a hindrance, not a help. Okay, give us the hard numbers. Yeah. This really feels like the aha moment for anyone thinking about where to put their AI development resources. Let's take Sudoku Extreme. It's designed specifically to test deep logical thinking over many steps. TRM? It nails it achieving 87.4% accuracy. Okay, pretty impressive. And the big LLMs. The ones we use daily for you know, writing emails or summarizing text, they score 0.0% .0 on this benchmark uniformly. Zero, <laughs> still stuck on that. So. Why? Why would a model that can write poetry or code struggle so badly with a structured logic puzzle like Sudoku? It's about how they work fundamentally. LLMs are masters of probability, of pattern catching. They predict the next likely word based on trillions of examples they've seen. Brilliant for generating human-like text. Makes sense. But Sudoku isn't probabilistic, it's deterministic. Every single step has to be logically sound, verified, before you take the next one. One slightly off probabilistic guess from an LLM early on, and the whole solution collapses. So they're making smart guesses, but guessing isn't good enough here. Precisely. TRM, on the other hand, it's built around intensive iterative reasoning. Deep recursion forces it to essentially check its work at every micro step. It's like um, a careful mathematician rigorously checking every line of a proof, not just glancing at the final answer. And this advantage isn't just for puzzles, right? You mentioned another benchmark. Yeah, you know, it carries over. The abstraction and reasoning corpus IRC AGI1, it tests more fundamental fluid intelligence. The tiny 7 million parameter TRM scores 44.6%. And how does that compare? Well, that beats models like Gemini 2.5 Pro, which got around 37.0%, and it even surpasses TRM's own predecessor, the HRM, which was larger and scored about 40.3%. Wow, okay. It really underscores that architectural elegance can be a better route to certain kinds of structured intelligence. Uh -huh. So the strategic takeaway for, say, a business leader listening is? Yeah. If you have a high value problem, maybe logistics, financial modeling, supply chains that needs precise, verifiable step-by-step -step logic, mm -hmm. then potentially using a massive general purpose LLM might actually be wasting resources and even sacrificing reliability. That's exactly what this research suggests. The focus could and perhaps should shift towards these hyper-efficient models that are specifically tailored to the logical structure of the problem itself. It makes sophisticated AI 
for niche problems seem much more accessible, doesn't it? Okay. Without needing, you know, nation state levels of compute. Absolutely. It democratizes access to certain kinds of advanced AI reasoning. Okay, let's unpack this. How do they make it so tiny without losing the intelligence? Mm -hmm. What's the secret sauce in the TRM architecture? Well, the key insight was a uh, radical simplification. They built on earlier work, the hierarchical reasoning model, HRM. Which was already quite small, relatively speaking. Yeah, about 27 million parameters. But HRM was more complex. It tried to mimic biology a bit, using two separate four-layer networks running at different speeds, a kind of two-part brain. Okay. TRM basically looked at that and asked, do we really need all this? Is that complexity essential or just baggage? And the answer was? Baggage. The research indicated that the dual network thing wasn't adding much value, maybe even hindering it. So TRM consolidated everything into a single, tiny two-layer network. Two layers from two sets of four. Exactly. Slash the parameter count by over 75%. That's the less is more idea right there. And importantly, performance actually improved because they got rid of that unnecessary architectural weight. But just shrinking the architecture wasn't the whole story, was it? They also tweaked the training, the learning process itself. Yes, and this is arguably just as crucial, especially for reliability. The older HRM model used a technique called one-step gradient approximation. Okay, what's that? It was mainly a trick to save memory during training. It sort of approximates how the network learns over its recursive steps, assuming things will work out okay. But, you know, for critical business applications, assumptions can be risky. Right, you want certainty. TRM ditched that approximation. It takes a more robust, computationally honest approach. It backpropagates through the entire recursive process. Okay, help me visualize that. If the model runs its little two-layer network, say, a hundred times in a loop to solve a puzzle, what does full backpropagation mean there? compared to the approximation. Think of the approximation like teaching maths by only checking the final answer. You don't know how the student got there, just if they were right or wrong at the end. Okay. Full backpropagation is like checking the logic in every single one of those 100 steps. It forces the model to learn flawless step-by-step -step reasoning, not just stumble onto the right final answer sometimes. You're ensuring the process is correct, not just the outcome. Exactly, and the difference was huge. In their tests, accuracy on Sudoku Extreme jumped from about 56% with the old approximation method to that stellar 87.4% with full backpropagation. Wow. That really highlights the importance of robust training for reliable reasoning, even if it costs a bit more computationally during training. Yes, the trade-off seems well worth it for dependability. They also streamlined the training loop itself. They simplified something called adaptive computational time, ACT. ACT. What did that do? It lets the model decide dynamically how many recursive steps, how much thinking time it needs for a particular problem instance. Okay, sounds smart. How do we simplify it? The older HRM version was inefficient. It needed an entire extra pass through the model just to calculate whether to continue or stop recursing. Basically, extra work, double the computation for that part. Sounds wasteful. It was. TRM found a way to get rid of that entire extra forward pass, just ruthless optimization, cutting the computational fat. And that, combined with other tweaks like EMA weights for stability. Yeah, exponential moving average of weights. It just helps smooth out the training process, makes it more stable, less prone to getting stuck or overfitting, faster, more stable, more reliable training overall. Here's where it gets really interesting. Aww. The economic implications for you, the listener. A tiny, robust, efficient model like this must change the cost picture dramatically. Oh, oh, absolutely. The first huge advantage is data efficiency. This is critical. TRM gets these amazing results using tiny training sets, maybe around a thousand examples, plus some augmentation. A thousand? Compared to LLMs trained on like half the internet. Exactly. LLMs need those massive internet scale data sets. TRM doesn't. This is a massive strategic differentiator. Because it unlocks specialized uses where data is just scarce mm -hmm. or maybe highly proprietary. Precisely. Think about regulated industries, specific scientific research areas, maybe optimizing a unique manufacturing process. If you only have a small number of high quality examples of the problem, you can still potentially train a very capable TRM-like model. That completely changes the cost barrier for bestoke AI solutions. You don't need this colossal data pipeline. You need maybe a thousand really good examples of the logic you want the AI to master. It shifts the focus from data quantity to data quality and logical structure much more manageable for many organizations. And you mentioned earlier that weird scaling result, cutting the network from four layers down to two, 
actually improved accuracy. Yeah, on Sudoku Extreme, it went from about 79.5% with four layers to 87.4% with just two layers. That flies in the face of typical deep learning intuition, right? More layers usually means more power. Why did less become more here? It likely comes back to the small, specialized data sets. With limited data, a bigger network more layers actually has too much capacity. It can easily overfit, essentially memorizing the training examples, including the noise, instead of learning the underlying logic. Ah, okay, so less room to mess up. Sort of. By shrinking it to just two layers, they forced the model's intelligence to be channeled into the depth of the recursion rather than the breadth of the network. It had to focus its effort on mastering that iterative loop, not getting lost in excess parameters. Makes sense. And the final piece of the economic puzzle. Inference costs. Running the model day to day. Massive savings there. A 7 million parameter model. It's incredibly cheap to run. Low latency, low energy consumption. You can deploy it almost anywhere. Like on edge devices. In a factory, maybe? Or on premise for privacy. Exactly. Think resource constrained environments, devices at the edge, situations where data absolutely cannot leave your building. TRM makes sophisticated reasoning feasible in scenarios where deploying a giant cloud-based LLM is just impossible or impractical. Flexibility, speed, cost savings. If we connect this to the bigger picture, this raises an important question about deployment. Is TRM going to kick LLMs to the curb? Okay, that's a crucial point. Based on this research, definitely not. It's vital for executives to understand the limits. TRM is highly specialized. It's a solver, not a creator. Exactly. It's a supervised learning method designed for tasks with clear deterministic answers. It solves logic puzzles, potentially optimization problems. It's not a generative model. It can't write an email, hold a conversation, or summarize a news article like an LLM can. So it's a precision tool, not a generalist Swiss Army knife. Precisely. Its strength is that incredible reliability and efficiency within narrow, logically defined domains. This really points towards a future that's more hybrid. Okay, hybrid how? You'd use specialized recursive models like TRM for the high reliability, structured reasoning tasks, the things that absolutely have to be logically sound. And you'd keep using the generalist LLMs for what they do best, language, creativity, summarization, interaction. Using the right tool for the job, essentially. Exactly. And the paper also showed that even within these specialized models, the best architecture depends on the specific problem. Oh, how so? Well, for Sudoku, with its fixed grid size, they found an attention-free architecture, an MLP mixer, worked best. Simpler was better. But for the RRC AGI benchmark, which has more variable inputs and requires spotting abstract patterns, some form of self-attention was still needed to generalize well. So there's no single tiny model architecture to rule them all. Doesn't seem like it. This is a key takeaway for R&D teams. The work shifts towards carefully matching the recursive architecture to the specific structure of your business problem, rather than just trying to scale up a generic model. Right, more targeted design needed. So looking ahead, what's the big challenge for researchers working on this? Where does this go next? Well, the immediate challenge is probably theoretical. We need a better framework, maybe new scaling laws, to really explain why this combo of tiny networks and deep recursion works so incredibly well for generalization on these tasks. We see it works, but the deep why isn't fully mapped out. Understanding the fundamentals better. Yes. And then the next big research wave, which is apparently already starting, is trying to extend this recursive, efficient paradigm beyond just solving deterministic problems towards generative tasks. Can we get some of this efficiency and reliability into models that can also create? That's a huge open question. Fascinating. Okay, so what does this all mean for you, the listener, trying to navigate the AI landscape? It feels like the era of assuming one giant monolithic AI model will solve everything. Well, that might be evolving. The future looks more like a hybrid approach. You'll have these hyper-efficient specialized reasoning engines, maybe like TRM, tackling the complex structured problems faster, cheaper, and maybe more reliably than the big LLMs can. That really is the core takeaway. LLMs aren't going away. They're fantastic for language, interaction, and unstructured data. But the real competitive edge in many enterprise AI applications might shift. It might move away from simply accessing the biggest model. Towards deploying the smartest model for the specific job. Exactly. The model that delivers superior performance on your critical structured tasks for a fraction of the cost, precisely because it prioritizes architectural efficiency and elegant design over just brute force scale. That could be the new frontier. Thank you for joining the podcast and see you soon.